welcome to this new tutorial offered to you by LearnElectronics.org. In this tutorial you will learn how to perform a BER analysis for a simple binary ASK system. Open the demo ASK project. In order to perform a BER analysis, you need to add to the system two loops from the data source to the output of the receiver. One loop is used to synchronize the transmitter and the receiver, aligning the transmitted and the received bit streams to take into account the delay introduced by the circuits in the signal path. The other one is used to perform the BER analysis once the two bit streams are aligned. Observe that the system sample rate is 100 kHz, whereas, the bit stream is 1 kilobit per second. In order to perform an objective BER measurement we need only one sample per bit. This means that we have to downsample the signals by a factor of 100. So, look for a downsampler in the algorithm design library and drag and drop it in the schematic. You need two downsamplers for each one of the loops you are going to add to the system under test. So, drag and drop other three downsamplers in the schematic. Connect the inputs of the downsamplers on the receiver side to the receive bit stream. Then, connect the inputs of the downsamplers on the transmitter side to the transmitted bit stream. Look for a delay model in the algorithm design library. Then, drag and drop it in the schematic. The delay is used to synchronize the transmitted and the received bit streams. Connect the delay with the downsampler on the transmitter side in the upper loop of the system. Drag and drop another delay model in the schematic and connect it with the downsampler in the lower loop of the system. Look for the time synchronizer model and then drag and drop it in upper loop of the schematic. The time synchronizer is used to align multiple inputs in time. Connect the inputs of the time synchronizer with the transmitted and received bit streams.
look for the cross-correlator model in the library. Then, drag and drop it in the schematic. The cross-correlator estimates the cross-correlation function for the two inputs of the model. We use this model to find the best delay that will synchronize the transmitted and the received bit streams. The cross-correlator model closes the synchronization loop of the system under test. Connect the synchronizer outputs to the inputs of the cross-correlator. The double arrow on the output of the time synchronizer indicates that this is a multiple output. So, in order to perform the connection with the cross-correlator, we have to draw a bus. Draw a simple wire from the synchronizer output. Then click on the wire to edit the net properties. In the window that pops up, type the bus name specifying the bus width. Call the bus queue. Connect bus wire Q2 with the Y input of the cross correlator, and bus wire Q1 with the X input of the, the cross correlator. Look for the data sync model and drag and drop it in the schematic. Drag and drop another data sync in the schematic. Connect the data syncs with the outputs of the cross correlator. Look for the BR measurement model. Then, drag and drop it in the schematic and close the lower loop of the system under test connecting the model with the transmitted and received bit streams. Click on the downsampler model to edit its properties. Set the downsampling factor to 100. Then click OK to close the properties window.
repeat the same operations for all the other downsamplers in the system under test. Click on the noise density model to edit its properties. Set the noise density to N density, and the unit to dBm. Then set the value of the reference resistance to R ohms. Remind that we have previously defined the values of these parameters in the system equations. Then click OK to close the properties window. Click on the time synchronizer to edit its properties. Set the working mode to time delay. Then click OK to close the properties window. Click on the data sync connected to the delay output of the cross correlator to edit its properties. Change the designator to core delay. Then, Click OK to close the properties window. Change the designator to core cross. Then, set the data collection option to samples. Set the start sample to 511 and the end sample to 2 by 511 minus 1. This means that the two bit streams are aligned when the cross correlation function reaches its maximum for sample 766. Then click OK to close the properties window. Click on the BR model symbol to edit its properties. Set the start stop option to samples, and the start sample to 20. Then click OK to close the properties window. Go to the workspace tree and then add a sweep analysis. When the properties window pops up, set the sweep name, the name of the output data set, the parameter range and the step size. Then click OK to close the properties window. Click the play button to run all the analyses.
The first thing you may want to check is the cross-correlation between the transmitted and the received bit streams. The cross-correlation is used to adjust the delay in the synchronization loop. Once you determine the delay that synchronizes the streams, you have to configure the delay of the measurement loop with the same parameters before performing the BER analyses. In this case the transceiver is very simple, so it is likely that the default delay value n equals 1 is the one that leads to perfect synchronization. Add a new graph to the workspace. In the graph series wizard window, select general as a type of series, then select the binary ASK data dataset and check core cross to display the cross correlation function. Finally, click OK to close the graph series wizard window. In the graph properties window, give a name and a title to the graph and define labels for the x and y axes. Then click OK to close the properties window. Click on the peak of the cross correlation function to display the sample value. You can observe that the maximum is reached for sample number 766. This means that n equals 1 is the right delay choice and no change is necessary in the measurement loop. Now you can run the sweep analysis. Go to the workspace and add a new graph. Select Y versus X as a type of series. In both X and Y data select the BER sweep data data set. Then in the X data tick equation 1 at N0 SWPB2 BER index, and in the Y data tick B2 BER. Then click OK to close the graph series wizard window. In the Graph Properties window, give a name and a title to the graph. In the X-axis tab, uncheck the Auto Scale option, define the minimum and the maximum value of the X-axis, give it a label and then tick the Logarithmic option. Select the Y axis tab. Then, uncheck the Auto Scale option and set the minimum and maximum values of the Y axis. Give the axis a label, then click OK to close the properties window. Observe the typical waterfall curve with the BER performance of the system under test. Thank you for watching. Bookmark www.learnelectronics.org in your browser and check the website periodically for new free material. Don't forget to follow Learn Electronics and the social networks. Please support Learn Electronics with a donation, a Facebook like.
a plus one on Google+, or a tweet to your friend.